Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Um, so I just want to talk to you today a little bit about faith. And faith is something that we, we talk a lot about, but a lot of times it's easier said than done. And um, I know a lot of times I have to pray for God to help me with my faith and, and uh, help me overcome my unbelief. And even though I have a little bit of unbelief, God, just, I pray that you still just do something with what little I have. And um, so as I've been kind of studying or just reading a little bit of Hebrews, uh, which is all about faith, um, that I came across a, a quote in one of the studies that I read about faith. And um, it was actually on Hebrew in Hebrews 11, the author goes into all the people throughout the Bible who had faith, who were faced with tremendous obstacles, with they were given promises and they just hadn't seen the promise fulfilled yet and, and how they had faith in the midst of that. And, and one of the quotes is, it was actually about Sarah uh, when her and Abraham were promised to have many descendants, but yet they were very old and didn't see that promise coming to light. And um, so the quote that I saw said, faith boils down to judging that God is faithful to and able to keep his promises. It was faith that enabled Sarah to receive strength to conceive seed. God gave the strength, but Sarah had to receive it by faith. And um, I just love that first part, though, that said it boils down to judging that God is able, is faithful to and able to keep his promises. It's not about us. It's not about what, how much faith we can muster up. It's about just judging and trusting that God is faithful and able to do what he said he's going to do. And um, so as I read that, I went into Hebrews chapter 12 and the first part, which we've all heard it, it goes into uh, how, so since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And, um, and I'm going to run through that really quickly, but because there's so much in that verse uh, about faith, but um, it's, it talks about how we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And that's going back to all the people that we've, we've heard about and we've read about in the Bible who have overcome uh, all these obstacles with faith. It says we're surrounded by that. That means that implies that we should be reading and studying how they did that and, and it be encouraged by how they overcame those uh, situations. And it says that there are witnesses. They are leaving behind a witness for us to be encouraged by. And uh, to flip it on our side, what witness are we leaving behind of our faith? Are we leaving behind a witness of faith or not? Um, and it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. And so if we lay aside the weight right there, it's not talking about the sin yet. It's talking about weight that, that trips us up, that hinders us. And the word hinder means to create difficulties for someone or something resulting in a delay or obstruction. So if we have this weight on us that it's something that we have chosen to carry with us in this race that, that we're on. And, um, and on a little side note too, Paul loved to use the word race whenever he described his uh, mission for God. And... Uh, but the word race comes from the word agona. I don't know if I said that right. But that means conflict or struggle of many kinds. So this race of life, we are faced with many conflicts and struggles of many kinds. It's not easy. But Paul and the, the author of Hebrews continues to say to continue to run this race with endurance. And uh, so as we are running this race with these weights on us, that hinder us, we have to throw those weights off. It could be uh, back in the time of when the Bible was written, when people ran races, they didn't have all the gear that people have now. They didn't have all the, the slick running suits and shoes and all that. They had just their normal clothes, tunics, whatever it may have been. And so these runners had to take off those, those extra layers of clothes so that they can run more easily. And so it wasn't necessarily something bad that they had on them. It was just something that was hindering them. So whatever it may be for you or for all of us, whatever is hindering us from being able to uh, be a witness for others to, of faith, whatever it is, if it's our thought patterns, if it's uh, shame, whatever it may be, if it's fear, 
what you know what it is for you personally, but we have to lay that aside. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about how that, how to do that in just a minute, hopefully. Uh, but then it goes into also laying aside the sin, which so easily ensnares us. And the word ensnare, or that phrase easily ensnares, uh, it comes from a Greek word. I'm not going to say this right either. Euper, okay, I'm not going to even try. Euper, I'm not going to even try. <laughs> uh, but basically that word for that phrase means four things. Easily avoided, admired, ensnaring, and dangerous. And so the sins that we uh, find ourselves caught up in, that word that they use in, this, in the Bible means easily avoided. Sometimes we put ourselves in situations that could be easily avoided, but we continue to do that. And whenever we put ourselves in a situation that we know we are possibly going to sin, you've already sinned. We've already sinned. I've done that. Time, I mean, I've done that before too, many times growing up. And when I heard that, that has stuck with me that if you put yourself in the situation that you could possibly sin, that is a sin itself. So you have to set yourself up for absolute success that there won't be an, even a chance for you to, to slip back into those ways or struggles that, we've, uh, that have tripped us up and, and, and ensnared us. Um, and then second thing was admired. A lot of times sin is it, we admire it. We, it's not something that we, we lost shame for it. We, we actually are okay with it and we have to be careful of that. Um, and then the third thing was ensnaring. That is a harmful trap. So sin is a harm. It can, whatever our patterns of behavior can become harmful traps that we don't realize we're snu stuck in them, but we are. And we have to be careful of that and lay it aside. And then the last one is uh, the word for easily ensnares that phrase. It means dangerous. And that's ultimately what sin is. It's dangerous for our souls. It's dangerous for, um, for, our, for our eternity. And, um, and no, we're not all perfect, but we have to set ourselves up for success if we want to continue to run this race and finish it successfully. Um, so, uh, the main, I'm going to read a little bit more and I'm almost done, but the main point of faith that I wanted to talk about where I gave the, the quote of judging that God is faithful and able to keep his promises as it continues to go in Hebrews 12, uh, it says, after it said, we let us run with endurance, the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And I, I love that because in Hebrews 11, it gives us all of the different people in the Bible who should encourage us by their faith and how we can learn from and seeing how God was faithful to them, that he is the same God then that he is now, that he will be tomorrow. But I want y'all to think about, and this just came to me a little bit ago, that Jesus is the ultimate witness for us. He, what he did, he left everything that he had, all of his glory, all, all of his just closeness with his father. He left all of that. He jumped, as Pastor D says, he leapt over the guardrails of heaven to come down here to this crazy earth to live a humble, not so great life, to be uh, totally forgot the word, tortured, <laughs> and just all the shame that was on him, he did that because he loves us, but the biggest thing that stuck out to me is his faith. Imagine the faith that he had, that he could do all of that, and I'm going to read a little bit more because it goes into that. It says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. And I want to point that out because the reason why Jesus had the faith that he had was because he knew his father. He knew God's heart. In all of this, it says because of the joy awaiting him, that means that he knew there was joy coming. 
And he knew there was joy coming because he had such a close relationship with God. He knew his father's heart, so he could trust the father's hand. He could trust what God was going to do. And he knew, mostly, he knew what was going to happen. And so, with him knowing all of that, we don't even know what's going to happen. And we, we lose faith. But Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen, that all of the pain and, and death that he was going to have to go through. But he had faith that God was faithful and able to keep his promise to him that he was going to resurrect him and bring all of creation, all of humanity into relationship with him. And Jesus knew that it was worth it for us and for you. If you were the only person, he would have done it. And so because he loves you and because he trusted his father. And so I want to encourage you to, while it's hard to have faith at times where we have to pray God help us when we don't have faith, help us to overcome that, that if we can just spend time with the Father, if we could just, when we don't understand, pray God help me to understand you, help me to uh, just reveal to my heart who you are, God, remind me of who you are. And when we know who God is, when we know his heart, we can trust his hand. We can trust when we don't understand, when we don't see what's ahead, we can trust him because we know that he is faithful and he is able to keep his promises. Um, so I hope you're encouraged today, and I just hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See you later.